Okay, uh, we're going to be looking a little bit at hyperbolic geometry today. We've mentioned it, you've heard, heard it mentioned several times in your textbook and, and so forth. And you may have said, well, what does this thing even look like? Um, you know, if we try to draw some things in sort of like a Euclidean environment, but then make them have these hyperbolic properties, they don't really work. So how are we going to um, uh, do this? Well, it's useful to have some kind of model. And as it turns out, there's actually several models that are isomorphic, but uh, that look very different um, That for hyperbolic geometry. And I've chosen one particular one that we're going to mainly use in this class. And we'll, we'll briefly look at some others later. But I chose to use the Beltrami-Poincaré hyperbolic half-plane model. One of the things, there are two reasons why I like this particular model. Uh, one, it can be done in a plane. So you can actually uh, illustrate this in actually half of a plane in Euclidean geometry. So we can do this on the surface of a geometry sketch pad sketch, which is nice, without having to go into some kind of three-dimensional object, first of all. Secondly, it's uh, it basically makes use of pretty much the whole screen, if I put the edge down at the bottom here. And so, in that case, uh, you know, we could sort of use all the real estate here. And then the third thing that's really nice about it, it's conformal. And what that means is that angles are measured essentially the same way that they're measured in Euclidean geometry. We'll get to angles uh, a little bit later on, probably next week, actually. So let's talk about what, a, uh, what, what we have here. So, point, we have a... A line here, which we can put a number line on if we want, but it's a it's an edge to our pl to our half plane. So the half plane, remember, is just one side of this line. Be all the points uh, points up in here, okay, above this. So if you think of this as the x-axis, we're looking at all the points with strictly positive points, positive coordinates. So anything that's actually on the line is not. It may be okay in this Euclidean plane, but it's not part of a hyperbolic plane. Those points we're going to think of as infinity. And, of course, anything that's down below that doesn't exist either. So keep that in mind when you're working with these things. So even though you might, for example, be able to uh, take some of these objects and move the point on the line or down below, you no longer really have uh, any, anything that exists in the hyperbolic geometry. Okay? So points down here do not exist. If you've gone down here, you've gone to infinity and beyond. So only Buzz Lightyear gets to go down there, not us. Okay. So our points have to stay up here above this line, that which we're going to call the hyperbolic half-plane edge. And we'll always illustrate it with a horizontal line. And that'll need be that'll need to be part of your uh, drawings whenever you. Uh, do one of these illustrations for hyperbolic geometry. Okay, now what do, what do lines look like? Well, there are going to be two types of objects, two types of Euclidean objects that turn out to be lines in hyperbolic geometry, at least this model of hyperbolic geometry. And one will be a ray, uh, uh, a ray without its endpoints, so do not include this point down here on the edge, of course. We never include points on the edge. But all other points of a ray that's going straight up perpendicular to that edge, we're going to call that a vertical line. And so that's considered one type of line. Another type of line is a line that goes through two points here, but it's a circle. Actually, it's a semicircle, half a circle. But the center of this circle is actually down here on the edge. Now remember, it does not include the points actually on the edge, but it goes up to, but not including that. Now, the way we're going to define distance in a little bit for this uh, in, in another video here in a few minutes is we're going to divide it in such a way that, that as this point goes from here on out towards the edge, it's going towards infinity. Okay, it's getting longer and longer and longer and longer, or further and further and further away from, uh, say, this point A. Okay, same way here, you can go forever this way. So when I move this point here, D, up this way, I can move it forever up, but I can also move it forever down because as I'm getting, once I get to here, I've gotten to forever, to infinity. Okay, so the way the distance is, is defined, this line does go on forever in two dimensions. Not as a Euclidean object, of course, 
but as a hyperbolic object. So that's what basically lines look like. Then, uh, okay, when I get to this point, I want to remind, I want to tell you that that once these next several uh, tabs, including this one on hyperbolic rays, uh, um, well, hyperbolic distance, line segments, rays, hyperbolic circles, all of those right there are actually developed by a uh, student of mine, Nathan Wesley Clark. Wesley was a uh, math major here a few years ago at UA Fort Smith, and part of his, well, his senior project was to develop a series of actually two pretty massive sketches dealing with hyperbolic geometry and then write a paper about that, and he developed some very useful tools that we will eventually get to use here. And basically he just, he created an environment and tools, custom tools, that correspond to basically everything that you can do here with Euclidean tools, such as uh, things like um, drawing circles, uh, given a two point, the center and a point, drawing a circle, given a center and a radius, uh, draw lines and line segments, given two points, uh, construct other things like uh, midpoints and intersections and all kinds of different things. So he, he came up with lots of really cool tools that allow us to use those in this environment. Of course, I directed him on that, that project and, you know, kind of worked with him on, on what we wanted to do. And, uh, but he spent a lot of work on that, came up with an ex exceptionally good project. Um, so I want to give him uh, credit for these, these things, and we should be very thankful that he did this work for us that we can use in his class. So extremely good uh, pedagogical tool. So we'll come back to hyperbolic distance in, in a bit. But um, intuitively, hyperbolic line segments are what you would probably think they would be. They're part of a hyperbolic line, whether that's, whether that's one that's um, you know, straight up and down here. So that would be a vertical line segment or a, an arc of a circle going this way. So it's a continuous piece that has uh, specific endpoints, okay? And of course, uh, points B and C are, are between there, and this actually illustrates uh, a betweenness relationship, A dash B dash C dash D is actually illustrated by this particular drawing. So you can kind of see what, what between means in terms of a, a hyperbolic line segment or what a hyperbolic line segment looks like. Hyperbolic rays are probably what you'd expect as well. They're a line segment here, and then all the points going off forever. Well, forever may go, go to here, so one way we could do it, uh, so A is your endpoint, B is this, uh, and so we could have a ray that goes straight up. We could have a ray that goes straight down, this, which would be a Euclidean line segment. The ray going straight up is actually a Euclidean ray, or we could have a, most of the rays will go the other way, and they'll be like, going out this or like this, there are arcs of a circle with one endpoint. It's an endpoint in Euclidean geometry that's not included, which is on the edge there, and uh, makes a circular arc. Uh, but of course, it really has no endpoint on, on the green end here, no matter which way it's pointing, whether it's which are, which are the kinds. So there's like three different kinds here. Notice uh, Wesley was able to come up with some very sophisticated tools here that allowed us to uh, sort of combine all these different types of lines in uh, one drawing that changes color when it comes to one of the special kinds. Now something that uh, turns out that's kind of cool is that hyperbolic circles turn out to be the same as uh, Euclidean circles except that the center is not where you would think it would be. So here's a circle created by A is the center and B is a point uh, on that circle. So that's a hyperbolic circle. Turns out to be a Euclidean circle in the way we, I mean, this model. Now this, here's something that's very instructive right here is to notice that right here we have a circle and this particular circle is, the radius is controlled by this parameter. So I can take this to a radius of two or I can take it down let me take it back to a radius of 1. Now what's interesting though is it's completely controlled by that parameter. So as I move this around, it stays the same radius. And it is staying the same radius there. So that circle is the same radius as that circle, which is the same radius as this circle. 
which gives you some kind of a feel for what's happening with this distance here. And intuitively may think of the distance as getting more dense as we get closer to the edge. So a little small Euclidean change makes a huge um, <coughs> hyperbolic change in distance. So that's kind of an interesting thing. <coughs> also notice that when you work through one of these sketches that, that uh, Wesley made up, you can hide this. There's usually some more explanation. Uh, this will go through, actually we'll go through that one in a little bit. But uh, let's say we go to line segments. If you hide the introduction, they'll he'll give you some things here about some, uh, some explorations. You might read through this. It's designed so that you should be able to read through this and maybe do some of the tasks that are there to help explore this. It does talk about some other basic concepts that we're going to be talking about in general. So most of the theorems that we're going to end up proving right here at the beginning, it has uh, hyperbolic um, um, illustrations of them. Some over here in the tab where I go through the uh, unified geometry for uh, incidence and then distance and order, um, you may see some places here where I'll, I will illustrate them. Uh, so here we've got an illustration where it's off to the side somewhere. Uh, that's going to be an illustration. Okay. Uh, an Euclidean illustration. But if I go to um, these, these uh, pages here, you're going to see some hyperbolic illustrations of some of the same concepts. And so read this. Uh, read some of these things here. Um, this talks a little bit about the plane separation post postulate a little bit and how talk about half planes and how this uh, plays out in this environment. It talks a little bit of how to use the custom tools that he built which um, actually are not available in this particular sketch but, but I'll make them available to you at some point in the future. Okay, so I think we're going to stop there. We're going to come back and, and look at di hyperbolic distance, how we formally define it in uh, the next, um, next video.